how y'all doing today? So, as y'all can tell, I've been mushroom hunting. Uh, I ended up with 34 total. Uh, I found more than that, but I left a few, let them grow a little bit, and hopefully uh, release some spores so there'll be more, so there'll be more to get next year. But uh, uh, you're gonna see a few uh, short clips of me actually harvest them, and then uh, we're gonna get into me uh, pro uh, dehydrating them. So. Uh, last video, if you remember, I, I cooked some in butter, and they were they were all right. But uh, these, I'm gonna save most of these. I may cook a few in uh, flour and fry them, and if I do, I'll, I'll post a video of that. But uh, I'm, this isn't the last time I'm hunting this year. I'm gonna go a few more times, and then uh, when I'm out turkey hunting, I'm definitely gonna be look at, uh, looking for them. But anyways, um, here's the video, and I hope y'all enjoy it. How y'all doing? It's the uh, first day of April. And uh, last week I found uh, 10, 10 morels out here, so I thought I'd come out here again and look around. And I seen found this dead tree, um, so you can see it behind me right there. I thought I'd look around it, I thought it might be a good spot. It's the same area that I've seen them other ones. And uh, here, let me show you real quick. So I was coming down, and that one, it's been, it's knocked over and has a big hole in it. But I thought there was that one, there should be more. And I look down, there's this one right here. Then I found two more, one right there. And right down there. So I'm going to look around this spot a little more. There's a um, same kind of dead tree on the other side. I'm hoping it'll hold some. Let's see how many we can get today. Okay. Um, coming today I thought I'd find a few but I didn't think I'd find that many but just like that last tree um, there was a couple trees just across the draw that uh, the bark was falling off the top of them and it looks like some ash trees so I thought I'd check them out and uh, I'm pretty excited I'll show you what I found though if you can see that they are just loaded there's a few over here down in there one on the other side but these are big they're big they're and there's a lot of them so I'm gonna take some of these I'm probably gonna leave a couple but uh I'm gonna take a decent amount of them and uh keep looking all right so these are the first ones I found down in the bottoms there's a few right there one there and then uh, a couple over here um but these yeah these are the first ones I found in the bottoms most of them's been about uh, 10 to 20 feet or 10 to 20 yards up the hill but I've been checking these root balls of the overturned trees and uh, that's where I found these uh, I'm heading back to the truck now I may try a few more spots or I may just head home I don't know but okay uh, now that y'all seen the uh, where I found them uh, most of them were under uh, or they were under just a few trees uh, the big uh, all of them I found they were under a dead tree bark was slipping um, the other smaller group I found they were under uh, a uh, they're around a root ball of a big tree that fell over and they're growing right around it but uh, and then I found a few other under another dead tree so I, I ended up taking out 34 um, I found this right here um, first time finding it I'm pretty sure it's a pheasant back. I'm gonna do a little research just to make sure. But I'm, I'm pretty positive that's what it is. Um, but like I said, I'm gonna make sure that's what it is before I do anything with it. Uh, but today, all I'm gonna do is be dehydrating them. So when I dehydrate them, um, what I've always, most of them I've always got was small ones like this. I just cut them in half and cut them right down the center, along, like right down the half, right in half, and uh, you, uh, and then I dehydrate them at a, let's say it's like 125 degrees. I set, that's why I set the dehydrator on. And I do it, uh, I think once say it took about eight hours last time to get them completely dry. Now these bigger ones, now I mean, that thing's uh, as big as my hand. Uh, that's, a, that's the biggest one I got. This one's pretty tall too, but he's not as, not as fat. Um, but I got a pretty, pretty, few pretty good ones. But um, with them, I'm probably gonna have to cut them down a little more than just half to make sure they actually fit in the uh, dehydrator. 
uh, but I'm saving them for a special occasion. Um, I got something planned and uh, can't say what it is right now, but uh, I got plans for them. And uh, when I use them, I plan on making a video and uh, I guarantee you I'll be making a video of that. But anyways, um, uh, hope you enjoy this video. And okay, so now I brought them in. Um, I got the morales. Um, I got three of them out. I got some of the smaller ones just so I can show you. Because um, I'm going to cut them in half. Uh, these bigger ones, uh, like this one or this one right here, um, I'm probably going to have to cut them down even more just to get them to fit on that. And uh, even after drying them, they're still probably going to be too big. And so they're definitely going to be having to cut down, having to cut them down more uh, just to get them to so I can store them. Uh, but the, here's the other mushroom I found. It's a uh, pheasant back or a dryad saddle. If you look here, um, you can identify it by the uh, the marks. It kind of looks like a, a feathers. So if you look at a, like, I guess that's why they call it a pheasant back. But uh, it looks like uh, kind of feathers over the back of it. Um, underneath, it has pores. So the pores, um, they're kind of more of a, of a uh, if you can see that good, um, they're more of like a honeycomb pattern. They're not gills or anything like that. So, uh, uh, so if it has gills, it's definitely not this. But they say this is the, uh, there's nothing really that looks like it. So it should be pretty easy to identify. There's definitely nothing that smells like it. So uh, if you turn it over, smell underneath, it has a, uh, it kind of smells like cucumbers or like a watermelon or something. But um, it definitely, it definitely smells like it. But anyways, so going, I'm getting right to it. So I'm starting, I'm just gonna cut these in half. And right down the middle. So yeah, I got, I got them cut in half. I mean, you can see right there. Um, so I know people, I know some people like to um, soak them in salt water. Me, I just, run them under, rinse them off real good. Because uh, there sometimes like there are bugs in there. Um, sometimes there's dirt and just different debris. I mean they're hollow, they have all these ridges. And then uh, I'm just gonna transfer them over straight over to here. And I'm gonna stack them around and then I'm gonna put another layer, stack them up and uh, and uh, I'm going to uh, set the uh, set the dehydrator. I'm going to turn it to about uh, where's it at one about 125, and I'm going to do it on 125. Um, some of the bigger ones, I don't know how long they're going to take, but the, um, the ones I got last week, it took about six uh, six to eight hours for them to completely get done. But anyways, um, I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these. Um, I'm not going to bore y'all with me cutting all of them i'll just take too much time and i'm going to get them set up there and i'm going to show you how i have it all set up and then later we may cook this and see how it tastes okay so i was about able to get about half of them on here uh the rest of them i put in the fridge uh, i'm probably not going to get them to them until tomorrow just because these are going to take six to eight hours uh with some of the bigger ones it may be a little longer to get the moisture completely out of them uh, but yeah, about half of them I was able to cut in half. Uh, the rest of them, I was cutting them in quarters and stuff just to get them to lay flat. And I mean, you can tell there's still a little bit of a bounce to that. Um, so they're not laying completely flat. Uh, like that bigger one, uh, I had to cut him into a lot of pieces um, just to get him on there. And he almost, he took up at least a little over half, half of one of the trees by himself. But next we're gonna, Next, we're gonna uh, soak this uh, pheasant back in water for a little bit. And after that, we're gonna cut it up. Like I said, or we're probably gonna, probably gonna cut out the stem and then slice it pretty thin. Um, they say it can get pretty tough, so uh, we're gonna see how it turns out. Okay, so I'll soak this for a little bit. Um, after I soaked it, the smell just intensified. Now it's almost, it's, it's strong enough, it almost smells like a watermelon. But yeah, it, it's really strong now. So um, it's a little dirty around there, and I know it was tough. So I'm just gonna cut around that stem 
anything that feels tough, I'm just gonna, to the knife, I am just gonna not keep. Okay, um, a lot of that, yeah, that's really, really tough. I may try to cut it thin and keep a little more, but, yeah, that's, that's pretty, feels pretty tough. Um, but the, these parts, um, uh, might be a little bit tough in there, but, uh, I'm just going to slice them pretty thin, and when I go with that, um, Yeah, now cutting it, that, that smell is really coming out now. Yeah, it smells real sweet like a, like a watermelon. I think that's kind of crazy how, how strong it smells, how much it smells like that. You, you really wouldn't think of a mushroom smelling like that. This, one's a, this piece is a little more tough. Um, hopefully it comes out okay. But now that I got that cut up, I'm just going to um, cook it in butter like I did them, uh, like I did them morels and um, see how it turns out okay um, I just added a little bit of oil and I'm gonna put some butter in it I'm gonna get that melted down um, once that's good and melted down I didn't add as much butter as it last time hopefully um, it's not too much we'll see how they turn out uh, may, maybe too much oil this time but I will get that melted down and I'm going to do the same thing, only add a little bit of salt and pepper and maybe a tiny bit of garlic. Okay, there was a little bit too much oil. Um, I got rid of some of it, a little bit of that. But I'm going to go ahead and just dump these on here and um, get these going. And we'll see how they turn out. Um, they say you don't want to cook them too long because uh, then they'll get too tough. Um, uh, this is my first time cooking them, so I'm probably going to cook them a little longer than I should. Um, but we'll see what they taste like. All right, so they look like they're um, they're about done. I just added a tiny bit of salt, tiny bit of pepper, and I added a little bit of garlic salt, and uh, not much at all. Um, I don't want to overpower these too much because I kind of want to see what they taste like um, by themselves. They, sh I would say they're definitely done. Um, I probably overcooked them a little bit. Um, but being my first time, I just wanted to make sure they were done. Uh, I'm gonna move them, remove them from the heat, let them cool off, and then I'll uh, then I'll get to trying them. All right, so here it is. Um, that's what it looks like. Uh, see what it tastes like. Hopefully, it turns out good. Uh, hopefully, I like it. If it does, uh, I don't know what to look for now. Um, it doesn't taste bad at all. Um, it's very similar to the morel, but very different. It's a little more firm. It has kind of an earthy taste, a mix of the what it smells like, but overall, it actually does taste pretty good. No, yeah. hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe so you can uh, be sure and know when I post more. Uh, Y'all have a good one. Okay, so I wasn't planning on um, cooking these, but I had, uh, I filled up about three uh, 32 ounce jars and I didn't have room for any more. So I decided to just go ahead and uh, cook these here. Uh, what I'm doing, this is how I like to eat them. Um, I'm just going to fry them. I got an egg wash here. It's two eggs, half a cup of milk. I just mix it up. Uh, you just put them in that, put them in the flour. It helps the flour stick. So um, the flour I'm using, I got uh, two cups of flour, a tablespoon of salt, two tablespoons of uh, ground black pepper, 
a teaspoon of garlic, and a teaspoon of onion powder. And it and it turns out pretty good. Um, I mean, you can always add something to it, make it a little more spicy, or however you like it. But so what I'm going to do, I already got some oil going. Uh, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna dip them in here, get them down in that, and I'm gonna then I'm gonna transfer them over to the uh, flour. Make sure I get it over all over it. Shake up the extra. All right, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and toss them around in it just so they uh, just so it gets mixed in. Uh, all right, now that I got that, uh, the flour likes to um, clump up on the inside, so try and you can try and uh, shake off the excess make sure it's not too much but you do want a decent amount of flour on there uh, then we're just then we got the oil going I'm just going to drop them right down in here and I got it pretty warm uh, you're only going to do a few minutes on each side it, it don't take too long uh, just pretty much until the flour is turning uh, a golden brown color and then once you're done with that then we'll take them off and see how they turn out Okay, so um, that's about the color you want them. You want them get like that on both sides. Um, and once once it's like that on both sides, they're pretty much done. Uh, but that's that's about the color you want them. And they taste trust me, they taste good. They're pretty good like that. Uh, but these this one's just about ready to pull off. Not not quite. He's about there. Yeah. But um, that's about, uh, about not quite half of them. Let me cook these, and I'm gonna get the other ones on there, then uh, I'll show you it when it's done. All right, there's the finished product. Uh, they turned out pretty good. Oh, where's the can? There it is. Um, but yeah, I got them, got a little bit of ranch, and um, that's it. That's pretty much it for the video. Go ahead and take a taste of it, see how it turns out. That's really good. That's my favorite way to eat them, and that is probably one of the best appetizers you can you can make. But if you find some morels and you don't have a recipe, try this one out because this is by far my favorite way to eat them.